Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The lip mix articulator that you have in your kit is different from the Hano articulator. Primarily, the main difference is that it is an Archon instrument and can be separated by lifting the upper member off the lower member and does what the temporomandibular joint does, that is the condyle is attached to the lower member and the articulating surface of the glenoid fossa is on the upper member. This causes a main disadvantage to occur, that is, it is very difficult to maintain centric if one is not constantly watching the upper member to make sure that the articulating surface is constantly in contact with the condyle of the lower member. Looking at the side, we see that there is a thumb screw on the top, and the thumb screw on the top controls the Bennett angle. If I loosen this, you can see that it controls this Bennett angle. For this particular setup, we will leave our Bennett angle at 15 degrees. If I turn it sideways, we can see a area on the side. There is a scale here, and this scale is the angle of the horizontal Conler guidance, and that can be turned in this fashion. This thumb screw right here controls that. This should be set at 15 degrees to assure the correct mounting. So the Bennett angle should be set at 15 degrees and the condyle setting should be at 15 degrees. The articulator has a screw at the top that, can, that has the ring that goes into this position. It is sent into its indexing guides. Uh, and the screw is tightened, similar to the Hano articulator. The incisal table at the front is very similar to the Hano in that there is a lateral wing as well as the central table here in the articulate or the incisal pin moves in the same directions. Now, in order to mount the case four on this articulator, you will be helped or you be borrowing a face bow of someone who has already mounted it because we will not be taking a face bow off of a mannequin. We will be mounting the case. And this is the Hanau face bow. This already has the um, wax bite on it. It has the indentations for the upper cast to fit in it. This face bow has um, a couple of advantages that some of the people feel over the Hanau in that these posts here, instead of having to mark a arbitrary hinge axis, they merely go in the ears. And it's generally easier for you to find the ears of a patient than it is to find 13 millimeters along a line from the tragus um, to the lateral canthus of the eye. So these uh, nylon tips go into the uh, auditory openings. And in the front here, we have this measurement. If you end up with it on the S, you know that the patient has an intercondylar distance that's sm small, and you have medium, and then you have large. And this is a self-centering um, face bow so that you don't have to worry about the millimeters and adding the two numbers and dividing by two. So in this particular case, um, we will not, as I say, be taking the face bow off the patient, but will merely go to the articulator with the, the face bow setting, which is determined by these two adjustments here, where this cast belongs. Now, in order to use the face bow, one has to take the incisal guide pin out and put that aside. You can just let the articulator rest. And we slip the bite fork on and open the articulator and then there are small openings that they go on to the 
little prongs that are present. You can see those prongs that are present on the side of the whip mix face bow, and then this is tight. And this, again, as I say, is an automatic centering um, thing. And the problem that I've done here is that I've locked the upper member inside. The upper member actually belongs resting on the top of the face bow. That is your third point of reference. So I will put that back in the right place. Now, you'll notice that there is a relationship established between the, the upper member of the face bow and the bite fork. Now, you see this relationship is maintained through any arc. You notice on your hand articulator, that relationship is not maintained. If you jack up the face bow, you change the relationship of the bite fork to the upper member. This is so straightforward that you can even mount this cast without even using the lower particular portion. You can mount it upside down or sideways, whichever you want. This relationship between the bite fork and the upper member will maintain a constant relationship. It's generally easier, though, to use the low, lower member to hold the instrument up. So what one then would do would be to take a cast that has been furnished to you, place it into the previously established index marks on the bite fork, and then this would be mounted using the impression plaster between the ring and the, uh, the cast. And when we come back from this commercial message, we will have the upper cast mounted. The upper cast is now correctly looted to the upper member. If we look at this head on, we'll notice that the incisal edges are just about on that black line, and essentially the, from the, when viewed from the side, the occlusal plane is just about level or slightly tilted downward uh, in its inclination. Now, in order to mount the lower cast, one has to, as we have in the other models when using the hand now, fabricate some sort of a shim to use as a spacer back here in the joint. Now, if we take this off and look more closely at the upper member, in, when viewing the area of the articulation back here in the joint, if you look at it, you'll see that it is curved, a linear, to take the ball of the condyle of the lower member, so that the flat shims that we have um, used in the Hanau instrument cannot be used here because they will both be too thick and they will also be very unstable and will not be able to be used. But through the ingenious efforts of your faculty, we have come up with this type of shim. Uh, this is a common paper clip and can be modified in such a way that this can be used as a shim. Now, this is a paper clip that has been modified to form the shim. And what one has done with this is to take the paper clip and open up the big end and then open it up again like this and then that puts you in this particular configuration and you cut, the, you cut it off right here and then you squeeze this end closer together. And what that allows you to do is to take the paper clip then and slip it over the outside edge of the joint area here and slide it to place into the back of this, and then when the condyle ball goes to place here, it will not be able to establish intimate contact on the curvilinear surface, but will be held back by the uh, shim. And we'll put this on the other side. We have two of these, and the other one slips in the same way using the springy action of the uh, paper clip to hold it. And this also allows us to have a resistance to the force of gravity and the shims will stay in place even though the uh, upper member is uh, held off the articulator. And now putting it into place 
we have the uh, necessary shimming action taking place. Now, in order to mount the lower cast, is all that has to be done is what is done with the Hanau articulator. You take the lower cast that you are going to use, place it against the upper cast, and again, we can probably be better off if we flip this upside down. So let me take the lower cast off of here and turn this over. this particular position. I've noticed that one of my shims has moved slightly, so I'm readjusting it. Now, one can take the lower cast, fit it into a very intimate contact in its centric occlusion position to make sure that it has no rocking. One can loot it to the upper cast with some impression plaster if one would want to, or uh, Im impression compound, or just holding it steady, mixing up the impression plaster, and then opening the articulator, closing it back on, and looting the lower cast into the upper cast. And when we come back, we will have the lower cast mounted on the articulator. We now have the lower cast mounted to the lower member with the impression plaster. With the shims in place, this cast has been mounted in centric occlusion, and if we arc this, we have a stable centric occlusion position fabricated on the whip mix articulator. Now, upon turning this over and removing the shims from the joint area, we will now see if we have correctly fabricated a slide. Now, due to the fact that these sh shims will all be bent a little bit differently, and they will all probably be fitting back in the area of the um, condyle in a different way, that the length of the slide will probably be quite variable for each individual. If we pull the upper member forward, we now have a demonstrable slide. Here's your initial prematurity and centric relation. You slide along the inclines back into your centric occlusion. Now, as we have used the shims to allow you to constantly reproduce the centric occlusion on the Hanau articulator, you may attempt to do that on the whip mix with the paper clips, but don't be concerned if you have a problem um, not having the centric occlusion being the same because you may not have the shim in exactly the same place. In order for you to more easily um, keep the centric occlusion more constant, one would go back up to the Bennett angle adjustment and reduce it to zero if one is going to be constantly using the centric occlusion for marking. This would be necessary to eliminate any of the side-to-side -side play that will develop as soon as you move off the um, centric relation contact. You see, in centric relation, you're always going to be without any end play. But if you don't have the Bennett angle set at zero, if you move into a protrusive relationship, you will develop end play. Now, here we have no end play. All I have to do is give me a little bit of Bennett angle, and you can see that immediately some end play develops. So that would mean that you would constantly be closing in a different position. So by using the, the Bennett angle to your favor and setting it to zero, one can eliminate any of the end play that would develop back in the joint. So this case is correctly mounted because we have created with the use of our shims, a slide from initial contact and centric relation to centric occlusion. Now, as I said in the beginning, the problem that we have with this articulator is now the area back in the joint always has to be carefully checked to make sure that whenever you do something, you have a pressure on here 
to make sure that these, that the upper and lower member is in contact. If you close like this, it's possible for this, you can see right here now, there's a, a definite space that has developed here. And this will give you incorrect reading. And this is one of the distinct disadvantages of this articulator is it requires uh, development of the skill to work around the fact that this is not constantly held in position as it is on your Hanau instrument. So this may make the instrument fall into your disfavor, but many men use this instrument with a great deal of skill, overcoming this by maintaining a downward pressure on the articulating surface, and when going into lateral excursions, and for going into lateral excursions, you should be set back into your previous 15, because then you want your Bennett angle to become effective by using it to push the articulator and hold it so that you're always maintaining intimate contact mm -hmm. of the balls against the upper member. And that way, always making sure that there is no space developing. This is something that um, is similar to working in a mirror. You have to develop this skill with the passage of time. But this will probably be one of the biggest problems that we will have because when you bring the case up to be checked and you think you have removed the slide, the instructor will probably be able to determine that the slide is back again and be able to show you that you possibly you've developed a separation in the rear end of the articulator. This then will be uh, adjusted in the way similar to the previous cases that you have adjusted. We will first mount or, I'm sorry, mark all of the contacts in centric occlusion. We will then adjust the centric slide out. Then you will go and adjust the lateral excursions, and you will check the protrusive. The um, lateral excursions in this patient um, will be um, fairly straightforward due to the steepness of the cuspid rise. The centric relation, however, will be um, a little bit more difficult to adjust due to the fact that there are very steep cusps. The protrusive adjustment on this patient will be minimal because we will not adjust the protrusive by saying that there are some loose teeth. This patient has no mobile anterior teeth and if checking protrusive we find there are no posterior contacts, the protrusive adjustment will be considered complete. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.